完全脱节了。在拿到硕士这个面试的时候，就很轻松的就去了，而且也非常顺利的就通过了一面。这个时候我就开始怕，我就过来跟他们说，我真的没有做，我还是是是乱投的。把我的这个就。所以就自信满满的去面试，非常轻松顺利的就通过这个班会，拿到一个知识。Okay, so I'm going to do the five minutes. 我在澳洲工作的这几段经历，我觉得能够有可能让我们成长的更快。特别像你申请两百是一样，就是通过的门槛。我非常非常的感恩这些曾经回答我的人，或者是给我的工作招生的生这些各种的因素，因为这是有的。说是最优秀，但是我可以非常自信的说，我有努力的去做到最好。Okay, guys. Uh, welcome to tonight Randstad recruitment uh, event. Now, I got a couple of uh, uh, you know, my state Baraba, you know, Chinese because of all the video we play at the beginning is all Chinese. So, don't think that a little bit worried about if this is an English event or not. And of course, this is English event. Uh, what we're gonna do tonight is uh, my name is Hunter. I just give myself an introduction. And, uh, I'm the founder of IFA Australia. Now, IFA Australia. Uh, sorry about the Chinese character. Huh? IFA Australia is the uh, uh, number one financial professional training of Australia at the moment. We in, uh, in the last six years, we've been training over ten thousand. Student all through Australia. Now this is my personal WeChat. If you want to get connect with me, you can scan this uh, uh, WeChat ID. And uh, if you're really looking forward, uh, because I got a PPT of uh, that stat, it's one of the PPT PowerPoint. Scan this one. I'll distribute it for you. If you don't want, that's fine. Okay. Now tonight. What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna I'm gonna give you guys a, a introduction on the financial professional development strategy in Australia, and uh, it's probably around 20 or 25 minutes. And then, uh, Randstad recruitment agent, uh, accounting department director Brad, and uh, commercial analyst specialist Sarah gonna show up tonight to share with you the. Internal recruitment process of uh, uh, Randstad, also uh, including the requirement for the commercial and the, the topic going to be driving commercial analyzed kind of things. Also, the production of the recruitment agency Randstad, and uh, I think the last 30 to 40 minutes going to leave with you guys. Uh, actually the q a so you're gonna bring your own question but i already got some questions online uh, tonight uh, we also opened the uh, uh, you know youtube live uh, they're gonna be over 120 people actually at the same time, same time watching this uh, seminar okay before we go and uh, let me give you an introduction on now uh, six day super content training accelerator now this is a strategy strategy session. Uh, we're gonna break down the stage of your accounting career into five. Now what we call is the five P strategy. The P number one is the planning. Now you're gonna have a really strategic planning about your career. And uh, of obviously every everybody showing up tonight, you're looking for uh, analyst role in the future. But 
on top of that, we also need to think about uh, industry working for, not only the position, because uh, uh, as we know, in the marketplace, the general knowledge doesn't mean too much value. Now the value all more, you know, fit into the specific knowledge. If you want to be an analyst, you're going to be an analyst for certain industry. You know what I mean? If you agree with me, you say yes. Raise your hand. It can't be a general analyst. If you want to be an analyst, you're going to be specific to certain industry, like uh, telecommunication, energy, pharmaceutical, FMCG, all these kind of things. Now, the second is, in order to upgrade to the next level, you're going to make sure you have the profile. Now, the profile, what I mean is, uh, you have a portfolio for yourself, not only the qualification, but also the knowledge of your specialty, and also the skill. For example, the communication skill and the public, is, uh, public speaking skill kind of thing. You can't just be good on one side. You can be both, you know, good on both sides, including soft and hard. And then the next thing is you're gonna build your products. Now that's quite important. Now what's your product? Now as far as we, you know, understanding, because we wrap up a very complex commercial accounting, uh, you know, career progress into four stage. The stage number one, what we call is closing. Now when you do the accounting, you always talk about closing the monster. As a second stage is what we call PR, R, R reporting. R. Now, but reporting means you're going to actually help the finance department or manager or controller to create the three big reports, three big statements PL, balance sheet, and cash flow. And the third one, what we call analyzing. Now, the three financial statement doesn't mean the end of reporting. It's only the beginning. So you're gonna analyze, analyze all of this information and transfer this financial data into an operation action. And the last stage is quite important, is what we call budgeting and forecasting. You're gonna provide the business insight, not only the a report, but something he can make decisions. Now today I got a consulting from one of student. She asked me, Hunter, you know, the recruitment agent asked me, do I have the insight of the business? Now what is the insight? Insight is something based on your understanding of the business and your history. On top of that, you can also provide the forecasting, the budgeting. And then, operation manager, based on your information, can make decisions. Now that's what financial analysts do. Okay, with the product, you also have to perform. You cannot just know it, but you're gonna put it into action. You're gonna make sure you deliver the result. That's why you need a achievement in your resume. Okay? You can't just list your product. I can do mouse ad, reporting, blah, blah, blah. I can do budget for, so what? Now, every time when you wrap up your resume, at the end of your job description, there's gonna be a couple of lines to mention your achievement. What did you do? What the redound you achieved in your last job? Now this is quite important because the employer, when they recruit the staff, they focus on their past. They want to know what did you do before. They want to hear from you the successful story. Not only what did you do. You know, all the candidates can do, but not everyone can deliver the result. So that's a quite important part. You're going to perform. The last point is uh, 
you're gonna make sure you're gonna make sure you prove the value to the market about your price. Hi guys, welcome. Uh, you're gonna provide value for the market and for the company. Then you can charge the right salary for you. Now this is a five piece strategy. Uh, some of guys, you might have the brochure with you. Now you can open your brochure. I'm gonna go through in the second page because the number one, the what we call point line, and the you know how is it square? Now you will have to make sure you're not only doing a financial analyst role, but also the role behind the position. Now the second is that you're gonna wrap up your profile. The number one qualification. Now what does qualification mean? Qualification means not only the degree you got, but also the qualification also means your accounting membership like CPA, CA. Now some people ask me, Hunter, you know, I really I don't think the CP working for me. Because I never use CPA, I just get the appearance. I think you need to get the CPA done because when the employer select the candidate, they're not looking at your experience, they're also looking at the qualification. So CPA or CA is quite important. You're gonna have the certificate. Very simple reason. All other people, they compete for the role, they all have CPA. Why not you? Now we don't have a problem with getting degree, and then the company side became your qualification. Some people get lost. They spend five or ten years in a small business. Now I ask them, what the point? Why you invest all your time in a small platform? Not worth it. Then you're gonna make sure you move on to a, at least medium size. Then you got a team. You can learn from others. Because some people they work in a small business turnover only you know, 10 million, maybe five or three million. And the employer struggling about paying the salary. And also you do everything in your finance team, including card pay or receive or, you know, you're doing a payroll, you're doing the reporting, you're doing the budget, you everything. But you can't be good at everything, all right? You're gonna work in the team. Now the company side is quite important. Now what is a good side for you? One, zero to 50 million. We're talking about this range down to small business. 50 million up to 500 million is medium. Over 500 million, we call big or giant business. So if you work in a company side, under 50 million, you put yourself in a big trouble because it's not good for the long term. You might get a one year, half year experience is all right. But in the long run, it's not good for you. You better work with a professional team. Now, another side that we need to think about is the number of years you can. When the employer select the candidate, they focus on the past number of years you can. You get more years, you have more competition and advantage. And also the, the last side of qualification is the industry. I don't know if you guys have experience of looking for a job. The recruitment agent always you know, ask what industry you come from. And uh, for employer side of you, they're always looking for some candidate with a similar kind of uh, industry background. It's much easier for them to understand the business. So if you focus on one business, one industry, if you choose the right industry, you better stick to it. When you change the job, you can change your role, but don't change the industry all the time. Because when you change the industry, you will lose your extra expertise of knowledge in that industry. Now, the second part is we're talking about the skills. The skill including the soft and the hard, are like soft skills, communication, interpersonal skill and also the hard skill like uh, Excel and like ERP 
and also like uh, what we're talking about, business intelligence. Now, as a financial analyst, commercial analyst, you better understand all this uh, this kind of tools. Not only Excel, but also the system and the reporting system, like this intelligence we're talking about. Because now it's, the formula is changing. We in a big data age. Now we deal with a lot of information. If you don't know the tool, how can you survive the analyst? Oh, that's quite important. So the last part we focus on the knowledge. As I mentioned, coding, reporting, analyzing, and budgeting. So you're gonna have both these three signs qualified in your resume and in your interview in order to get a job. If you short of any part of the, you're gonna find time to fill it in. All right, some people said, Oh, Hunter, you know, I really like this uh, seminar today, but I prefer watch at home. I said, what a wonderful chance we can meet with the industry recruitment expert face to face. Why both that just come over? Why you watch at home online? You know, you can get a chance to talk to the recruitment expert T tonight. This is such very valuable opportunity. Eventually, you will face people. If you're never going to get a job through, uh, you know, Skype. I, I know some people might get a job through Skype, but majority, I'm talking about majority of people, they get a job through what? Face to face. Of course. You find your girlfriend or girlfriend online without meeting each other, of course you can do face to face. But this is quite important. Now, the third one is the you're going to build in your product. Now, the specific product including the clothing, like Monsanto, like balance sheet consolidation, p and review for financial and system content. Consolidation, analyzing financial statement. Also, the budgeting for, account, for financial accounting. For management accountant and the financial analyst, you're going to know the cash flow, you're going to know the KPI, dashboard, costing, commercial case, and then your lower forecast. So you need to know this knowledge in order to get a job, because this is a professional. That's what we call you professional accountant and analyst. If you don't have it, by the time to grab, you can learn from yourself, or you can learn from others. Jump online, get a training, or just go to IFA, get yourself in a big way. So we go six day, look, look at the version of that, six day accelerator. Now the last part is uh, you make sure you perform. You make sure you understand the company case. You make sure you understand the company processing procedure. And also you make sure you understand the skill financial modeling and also some business intelligence system. Now the last time is now you get everything, but you have to know how to sell, to sell yourself at a you know, reasonable market value. The employer is going to value you based on your knowledge, qualification, and a skill. Now, either part is quite important. If you show one of them, you might not get the idea of the job you're looking for. Okay. I think uh, I pretty much done the instructions uh, approaching seven. Now, let me take the honor to introduce the two expert team from uh, Ramstad. Uh, the number one is uh, the Ramstad Accounting Director, Brad. Brad actually working in the you know, recruitment industry almost forever. I, I have a look on his thinking. As a West recruitment child house, and uh, I, you know, it's very we, we have very few occasion to grab this big boss into our seminar. Now we're very lucky today. We have a Brad on board. Thank you, Brad. And the second lady I want to introduce is Sarah. Now, when I get the poster shared in the social media, I straight away get a lot of your fans, Sarah. And the server have been doing focus on the analyst role in the last six years. And a lot of students and uh, 
even our teacher, personal trainer, is your fans. And he get a job for them. And straight away, he said, I know Sandra, I want to come. A lot of fans, they show up tonight as well. Let's give them a big welcome tonight. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. I'll leave the stage with you guys, right? Thank you. And I'll grab been asked this evening to talk about the rise of commercial. In terms of commercial, the, the market has changed a hell of a lot local market over many, many years. I've been doing it for 18 years now in Sydney and uh, internationally. Um, so what we thought we'd do today is kind of just give you a bit of an introduction to Randstad and myself and Sarah. Um, we're going to talk to you about the recruitment process as well. So what actually happens when you apply. Okay. We can look at that from both the candidate when you're applying, but also if you're direct to a client, exactly what they would go through. So you guys get an understanding of what to do and what not to do. Okay. Um, we'll talk about how recruitment has changed. As I said, I've been doing it for 18 years. When I first started, there was the emails. We were faxing CVs. You can actually know what a fax machine is. Um, and then we'll talk about the you know the rise of commercial, commercial analytical, pricing, business analysis, etc. We'll put it all into one big basket for you, which is commercial. And some of the mistakes, hopefully you guys don't do on a daily basis, but some of the mistakes that we see, just to advise and assist you guys. My preference is to, if you've got questions, ask. The more interactive this is, the better it's going to be for all of you. Okay, so what we don't want to do is just stand here, rattle off and you've got questions, ask them straight away. So the more interactive, the better it is for all of us. Um, so Randstad, just to give you a very, very quick snapshot, snapshot is obviously, as you can see, over a thousand people in Australia. Um, in terms of what we do, we don't only do recruitment. So yes, we have the operating business which does temporary, permanent, contract, um, like any other, other recruiters, but we also have a very big focus on what I will talk about later called the human forward element, which is obviously around um, HR technology, um, our, our RPO business, our project RPO business, our MSP business, um, Randstad as a business globally invests in technology every single year, so we have a fund. Um, we buy software companies um, which relate to the recruitment sector. So, you know, giving you an example, if you've seen Video My Job, that's one of the businesses that we obviously are invested in. We own Monster, the job board, globally. Um, so we're not just purely a recruitment-based business. Um, as I said to you, our brand promise is all about human forward. Um, and human forward is to support people and organisations to realise their true potential. And hopefully, that's how as a business we operate, in terms of your service, in terms of how we treat everybody. Okay? And we'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. Our purpose, as I said, is, is to help candidates find jobs and realise their true potential, and also to find out to help our clients find the best talent in the marketplace. Okay. Fairly, fairly easy, you would hope. Um, now, in terms of the recruitment process, just giving you guys 
a broad understanding of what we do day to day. We talk to a lot of people, we see a lot of CVs, we see a lot of mistakes, we see a lot of errors. But hopefully tonight we can talk you through that. So naturally what happens is we either get a job, a client calls us, or we see a job and we speak to a client who in turn then gives us the order. Okay? What do we normally do? We have a database. Okay? We would look to the database to see who's actually active and who's registered. So if any of you have been to a recruitment business, you come in, you have an interview, you're put onto our system, people are made aware of you, and the process starts. Okay. We look at, obviously, networking, referrals, we talk to people that we've got relationships with, um, and to try and get people as well. We look at, obviously, now submitting candidates to a client. Okay. So we put the job, whether it be C, hypothetical, you guys, would potentially apply, we get a CV, comes into our own box, and then we review it. Okay? Now we review it based on a number of different things, which Sarah will talk to you a little bit about later, but in, in, in essence, we are there to assist our client. And our clients will give us a brief. Okay? And naturally, if you don't meet the brief, hopefully you're getting a rejection letter, but also on the flip side, you know, if, if it's a yes, you're on the phone straight away. Okay? And we'll talk to you about the, the application process because there are things that you need to do. Okay? You cannot have one CV. A lot of people make the mistake, they have one CV, and that's the one they fire off every single time. Okay? You need to tailor your CV every single time to the job that you're applying for. Okay, obviously there's an advertisement, we do the screening, we do the, uh, well we'll talk to you over the phone, we'll likely have a conversation, we'll book you in, um, obviously if you are suitable, naturally the process starts, if not, obviously you get rejected. Okay? We see a lot of people every day, every week, every month, every year, okay? we get a lot of CVs, Particularly when you start to look at what we're talking today about the rise of commercial, everybody wants to work in commercial. Why? It's the sexier part of accounting. Okay? You're talking to the business, you're analysing things, you're looking at where it's going. It's not purely technical. Okay? Any questions on the recruitment process? Okay. How many of you call the recruiter before you submit a CV? Be honest. How many of you just send the CV, the application? <laughs> yeah. What do you think is the better way? Yeah. Pretty self-explanatory. What's the best chance you're going to have at success? Bearing in mind, you're the one looking for the job, not me. But what's your best chance of success? So just for yourself, start to think about how you as the person looking is putting your best foot forward. Or in most cases, not. Honestly, in my experience, uh, before sending the CV, if I can uh, find time a while linking, or I mean, or do a little bit search about the recruiter, that would be beneficial because before everything starts, we kind of build the connections, mm -hmm. and then I might send the CV and later wait for a half day or one day and call up to transfer the um, following yeah. up. Okay. 
So let me, I'll, I'll flip it. Okay. What do you do when you walk through the door of an evening, the telephone rings, and it's Energy Australia and they want to do a survey? I mean. Okay. So imagine getting those calls all day. To put it in perspective, I was just going to say, we'll get 100, 120 phone calls a day. And I love to say that I remember every phone call. I have no idea. Because my mobile's going, my landline's going, I've got someone yapping at me next door, and I've got my emails. So I, look, I'd love to say that I remember a phone call. I'd love to say that I remember your name, but I don't. Just, that's just the facts. Because I'm getting 100 calls a day. So when you think about the candidate, the, the process and the application, you've got to really think about it. Okay? Time and effort into it. You know, is it the right job for you? Call the recruiter and have a conversation because it'll become very, very... The decision will be quick. They'll be instant. If you have an impact over the telephone, you're going to have a far greater impact than a CV, than a document that just can't talk. Document can't sell you. The telephone, how you communicate over the phone, your energy levels, your enthusiasm, your ability to communicate what you do is going to have a far greater impact, and particularly because we're talking about the commercial analysis and that aspect. It's all about communication. Every advert that you see in regards to the commercial side will have something in it about communication. But you are choosing to apply via email. Okay? Okay. As I said, the chat, you know, recruitment has changed. When I started 18 years ago, as I said, it was a very, very different marketplace. Um, you know, people used to tell me that, that you know, because there were no databases, they used to have Rolodexes of instant photos. And that's how they, then we got databases, well, we got faxes, then we got databases, then email came into it, then job boards came into it, now you've got internal recruitment teams, you've got aggregators, you've got social media, you've got algorithms going left, right and centre all day, every day. Um, it's changing. You know, the landscape, it's a global landscape. So, you know, how do you actually stand out from the crowd? And in terms of Randstad, again, just giving you some understanding in terms of how we operate as a business, we've changed the way that we look at things. So we don't just take a job order. It's a lot more detailed. We look at the fit. You know, is it the right fit for the candidate? Is it the right cultural fit from a company, from a job, from an experience perspective, but also from a boss? You know, what is that person who's hiring looking for? You know, what are the key touch points that we need to be across? Um, as I said, yeah, you can. This gives you some idea in terms of what we do on a day to day when we're putting together our shortlist. So the avenues that we look at and what we go through, so whether it be headhunting, whether we use our sourcing centers in the Philippines to map the whole marketplace, whether we speak to people and get referrals, whether we advertise, whether we use SEO, SEA, obviously the algorithm piece is a huge thing now. You know, the adverts that you get on Facebook, they're not there because they are smart, they're there because the algorithm in the background knows exactly what you look for. They know the demographic, they know what you, you, you click on, and all of a sudden you've got all the adverts. It's, it's not just luck. You know, technology is changing and you guys have got to move with it. And you've got to, you know, to make your impact, you've got to be across all of this stuff. So, we talk about the rise of commercial, okay? And giving you a bit of history, why is there being a rise in commercial? You know, the biggest change within recruitment has obviously been the introduction of shared services. Okay? So a lot of that, particularly because a lot of that's being offshore, you've had a lot of the technical side. So your AP, your AI, your payroll, your credit, 
whether it be China, whether it be India, whether it be the Philippines, um, whether it be in the US, you know, there's been a lot of offshoring of roles. So there has been a lot of loss of roles. A lot of those shared services now are taking the technical, so your financial accounting, your fixed assets, that's also moving internationally. Okay? So you are only left with certain aspects within businesses in the local market. Okay? So what are you guys going to do in terms of honing your skills? I know Hunter's sent me a list of multiple courses that obviously the IFA does. You know, my advice, start looking into some of these. But then take that and use that internally. Be proactive with your bosses. You actually get the experience. You don't have just the, the, the letters. You actually have the experience. Okay? Um, as I said, offshoring has happened. There's far better systems, whether it be your SAPs, your Oracles, whether it be your BI tools like TM1, Cognos, Oracle Financial Analyzer, Hyperion in terms of consolidation tool. There is a hell of a lot of change in technology. Okay? The days of just linking spreadsheets, hopefully, is gone, make your lives a lot easier. Um, you know, we are in the digital age. You've got to move with the times. That's creating new roles that have never been here before. We're seeing a lot of, obviously, the insights and analytics now starting to, to pop up as new areas within businesses. Again, they are quite heavily systems-based, but again, it's very heavily analytical, commercial. It's about how do they grow the business. Obviously, there's a greater focus on improvements, the value-add, you know, with manufacturing costing too much, yeah, everybody's moving out offshore, so your business has become quite heavily sales and marketing-led functions and not manufacturing-led. So once you've got the sales and marketing-led function, naturally they want the insights, they want the, the analysis, which is bringing it to the fore. Okay? And I can't speak more highly on communication. Okay? Communication is absolutely paramount. And it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. Okay? We see a lot of candidates every single day that cannot communicate what they do. Beautiful CD, fantastic <coughs> CDs. And you're really excited to see them, and then you ask them, what do they do? I want to actually tell you. Okay? So you guys need to know your CVs. You need to understand what you're doing. Right. So this is now more, I suppose, who you are. When you're starting to look at all these commercial roles, as I said, you will see that everything is about interpersonals. It's about communication. It's about analysis. It's about BI tools. Everything I've talked about, Take note, these are cut and paste straight from job specs. So you can see what you are looking for. As I said, Sarah will talk about the application process from your side and what to do with your CV. As I gave you a tip, don't just have one CV. You know, you've got to use your CV according to the job spec. Okay? When you think about somebody sitting, reviewing CVs all day, if you've only got what the job is at the bottom of your CV, they've lost interest. You've literally got five to ten seconds to get their interest, and that needs to be the first four lines. If you're not ticking the box in the first four lines, I hate to say it, you just lost them. Huh? Because we get CVs, we can make, we can advertise. I particularly focus on the more senior side, and if I advertise, I will get 200 applications every single time. Okay, so 200 TVs, 200 phone calls, potentially everybody can do the job, but only a couple are going to be exactly what the client wants. You know, you have to stand out from the crowd. Okay, so. Again, with all of that type of stuff that you see in terms of who you are, you need to be able to show that very, very early on in your CV, under your responsibilities. 
how you, how you write your CV, how you split it out in terms of responsibilities or achievements, different projects that you've worked on. Uh, I mean, one of the questions that um, Hunter asked us to talk about was, how do you go from being an assistant accountant to a financial analyst? And I could answer that very, very quickly. You don't. Simple. But the reality is you've got to get the experience to make it. I heard Hunter talking earlier on when we first walked in, the, the different sizes of organizations. And I absolutely agree with Hunter. However, in the sub $50 million market, you're more likely to get a more well-rounded more, uh, you probably play both sides of the fence in terms of financial accounting and management accounting. And then you've got to, once you've got that experience, you've then got to take that and take that to the next level. Okay? It can be a good stepping ground, again, depending on the size of the organization, depending on the brand. Because they're, sorry to say this, but there are big international businesses where the local division is only $15 million. In the local business is only $15 million, but it's still part of the global business. Okay? So I would obviously advise you guys to start thinking about all of this in terms of your CV, how you're pitching your CV, how you want to make that move. Start taking on work if you want to move into the commercial space. Start taking on work within your own business. Be proactive. Ask your managers. Let me do something. You know, when you look at from a month end perspective, yeah, you might be doing the prep of the accounts, but ask if you can do some of the management reporting. You know, what are the management reporting? It's naturally going to be analysis against PL and balance sheet, potentially DSOs in terms of um, outstandings. It might be you, you've seen some line items in terms of expenditure, which have all of a sudden spiked. You go away and you do it and you be proactive. And that starts to give you the experience you need to start moving forward. Because the commercial analysis side of the business is about driving the business forward. And if you've got nothing there but purely technical, it's very, very difficult. You've got to find an employer who's prepared to take that risk. You know, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, big four CA lady came and met me last week. She's a manager, all technical, as you'd expect with an audit, wants an analyst. Yeah, I've just seen the friends go, oh, how's she going to do that? Reality is you can, but you've got to then bring to the table what you actually did within your role. If it's purely financial audit and there was nothing about process change, there was no value add in terms of looking at the audit, finding the, the items that needed explaining. You're just doing financial audit, you're ticking, and actually technical, and every recruiter in the Sydney market, if not the world, will push you to a technical role. But if you've got process review, if you've had secondments, and you've actually been on site, and you've done systems work, you've looked at things that you've analysed, you know, audit at the end of the day, although you're technical, you do analyze, but you've got to bring that analysis to the table. Okay? Any questions on anything that I've discussed yet? The more interactive this is, the more you'll get from it. Yes? size of the business. Okay, so if you are an assistant, you're probably on a day-to-day -day doing reconciliations, you're probably doing a bit of cash flow forecasting, journals, you might be assisting with the preparation of accounts, you're probably not doing the stat accounts, but every month you put together parts of the PL. Okay, who's doing the analysis? 
how are you going to get experience to move if you don't take it on? Yep. So that you can uh, do a little bit analyst as well, besides your routine jobs. So yep. that's a point you can uh, Absolutely, 100%. And again, depend on the type of business you're in. If you're in retail or FMCG, start to look at certain products. Start to look at the performance of those products. Which are the products performing when? So start to add value. Be proactive. Don't wait for them to ask you. You go and do it. You know, no one's ever said no because you want to do something on top of what you normally do. As long as you get the day job done, that's great. But no one's going to say no if you're doing stuff off value. And businesses are going to look on that positively. Recruiters are going to look on that positively. You're searching for the commercial analyst. You do not only people. So if when you say the only the assistant, Role, you will still say they do to consider whether you choose them or not? Look, it depends on the level. You know, most of the commercial analysis roles at the moment in the marketplace, if you do a search, so before I walked in, I think there's about 3,800 jobs at the moment advertised on C. Okay? As of yesterday, in terms of analysis, there were 1,800. Okay, so 50% of the roles are advertised at the moment in the Sydney market, and SEEK is an anomaly. Okay, globally, every single job board around the world, every country, tends to have about 10 to 15% of market share. SEEK has 80 to 90% of the local market, so it's a purely dominated monopoly. So you can actually use SEEK as an indicator and a benchmark. Okay, 50% of those roles have the word analysis in it. If you were an assistant accountant in a $20 million business and you're applying for a commercial analyst, uh, call it 100K, because they tend to start around about the 100K okay, and go up. If you're in a, an assistant accountant in a $20 million business, you're probably earning 65 to 75 grand, I would have thought, and you're applying for a 100K role, which is it's not going to work. You know, bearing in mind, and again, depending on what the client wants, a lot of people are talking they want CA. You know, everyone wants the technical training of the big four or a chartered firm because your technical understanding and your discipline is superior because of the structures that are in place within those environments. Okay. That is seen very, very positively because you've got the discipline. And you've got the technical, and to get that, those two little letters, the market views that very, very positively. Okay? Would I, I would tell you in terms of if you were in an assistant accountant role, start to do more of the analysis, start taking on the month end, start asking for more, start analyzing and seeing where the, the anomalies are, because that can only but help you. Okay? Any other questions? Yep. Uh, I can see, I can see you list a lot of qualification requirements for yep. the promotion. From your experience, what's the key um, requirements the most um, companies prefer? So, can you list a few? Uh, is that communication the most important? Look. First and foremost, a well-written CV, and I know Sarah's going to talk about this, but a well-written CV is always going to win. Okay? If you can explain the type of analysis that you've done, it, at the end of the day, analysis is analysis. If you're able to then present that to your stakeholders, who then take that and implement it, it's going to be a big tick. Most, at the moment, will view retail and FMCG probably higher because it's product. It's product, and when you think of retail and FMCG, it's daily. So your analysis, if you're in the big corporates, like a Woolies or a Coles, it's daily. They're doing daily P&Ls. 
they're analysing stores, they're analysing the products. So, so there's, it drills down and down and down and down. So what do we look for? First and foremost, what do I look for? I always look for a well-written CV. I do look for qualification because I know my clients and clients will look for it. Then you look at exactly what type of analysis you're doing. Okay? So it could be whether it be sales and marketing led, or if it's operational, if it's supply chain, manufacturing, dependent on the type, you know, am I going to put a supply chain analyst into a sales, supporting sales and marketing? Probably not. Because operational, they look at cost drivers, they look at costs, they look at labour. Sales guys, they look in top line. So although there's the analysts, you've got your clients, obviously, who pay our bills, looking at it from a very different angle. So you've got to look, you, again, going back to the application process, you've got to apply for what's relevant. I'm going to hand over to Sarah now. Oh, sorry. Oh, apologies. I observed that uh, preparing with contract job and the permanent job, most people will think that the contract job will require that the requirement for contract will be lower. But my experience told me that uh, recruiters tend to match every skill and tend to find a perfect and uh, perfect match the. Uh, Candidates for the contract job, but for the permanent job, they will, uh, if like you lack like some of the certain skill, you will leave you will leave the space and you will still uh, give, give the candidate a chance to uh, for face to face meeting and proceed for longer. Is that true? Yes, I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. The reason being, it's a contract job. The client needs the quick fix. So he wants every box to be ticked quickly because he doesn't want to spend the time training and developing somebody. Whether it be a project, whether somebody's gone on extended sick leave, whether it's a busy time of the year, where it's year end, they get in the rent people, whatever it might be, budgeting season, but they want people to be able to hit the ground running. With permanent, it's a long term. So if you see something in an individual that might not tick the box back, but they've got the smarts, they've got the right attitude, they the right cultural fit. Absolutely. You know that I would, every single day of the week, you know, you hire some, not the finished product. Because it also means longevity. That's helpful, because that's my observation. That's yeah. feel it that way. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Over to Sarah. Thank you for having me again. Um, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about um, applying for roles. Um, we've already touched on it. Whether it's better to do a phone call to tell me all about the role you're advertising or whether we're just going to send a resume. Look, if you're going to make a phone call, make sure you make an impact. So that's what we're talking about before. Communication is key. So if you're going to call me about a role that I've advertised, you're going to get my attention within five seconds. Otherwise, I've got to hang up and go to another meeting. Okay? One thing that we call in recruitment, and Brad taught me this many years ago, was an elevator pitch, which is 30 to 60 seconds of if you're stuck in an elevator with somebody and they ask you, who are you and what do you do? That you can tell them. Short, succinct, precise, and they walk away saying, oh yeah, I get it. Okay? That's something you've got to work on because if you're going to call a recruiter or even a company directly and say, hi, I want to know about this job, they're going to say, yeah, of course, tell me about yourself. You have 30 seconds to keep them on the phone. Okay? Something to think about. If all else fails, we have a resume. Okay? You always send a resume. Number one, um, whenever I look at a resume, I look at contact details, mainly to see if you're in the country or if you're in the state. Okay? <laughs> it's amazing how many resumes I get which are overseas, and I just don't have time for that. So, Quick question. How many of you actually put your address on your CV? 
The full address. Full address, street address. How many of you leave it off? Why? Doka. <laughs> huh? So, hypothetical, you're applying for a role for Qantas. Yeah? We've advertised that it's Qantas, but you live in the Nor in the Hills district. Okay? And if you were the client, so let's say you've got the perfect CV, okay? would you, as the hiring manager of the client, hire the person who's going to travel from the hills to Qantas every day? Again, best foot forward? How are we going to know that off a CV? <laughs> You've got to get a phone call first. <laughs> okay. Again, best foot forward. Sydney actually is a very, very, it's a small town, but your, your travel distances are difficult. Okay. It is very, very difficult. And travel is expensive. You know, using public transport is expensive. You know, at a hundred grand, you're when you think about it as accountants, you're paying off the tax money and you're traveling and you're commuting. So again, absolutely put your address on there because it's far easier for us as recruiters to target the right organizations within a half an hour to an hour commute. Most people will do an hour. Okay? Most. I'm not saying all, but most. More senior people, absolutely, they don't mind traveling. But still getting people past an hour is, you know, I live in the eastern suburbs and I manage an office in Parramatta, and that's an hour and a half commute for me. On a great journey, trust me, I'm wrong now, but I do it. And let's maybe put suburb, not actual address, for starters. Suburb, absolutely important. Um, a visa status, big one. Okay, if you're going to apply for a contract role that's six months or longer, um, we can't afford to have anyone on a working holiday visa. Um, for some government roles, you've got to be a permanent resident or a citizen for federal government. Um, permanent roles, absolutely. Permanent resident or citizen. Now, we look at this if your education is from overseas. Okay, so always have it on there. Just so that your resume is meant to answer some more questions than raise them. Okay. Um, next one, please no pictures. Okay, I don't want a selfie on a resume. I don't want diagrams on a resume. Um, the amount of times I will get um, a photo that's not professional, sometimes they've cut out their partner from the photo. Um, you know what, that's why we've got LinkedIn. Okay, and we'll have another session on that later. But um, LinkedIn is where you can have your photo and do all of that. Just give me words on a piece of paper. Okay. No diagrams either, tables, not ideal, okay? Basic, basic black and white print. Um, no formatting, please, because what happens, you apply for a role, it gets churned through some CRM program, which pops up to me, and then I click on it, and sometimes it hasn't programmed properly, so it could come out in hieroglyphics, or it could come out in like a weird format where it's like got columns and stuff and it's too hard to read. And I'm really not IT savvy, so I just pass. Um, <laughs> I'm being very honest here, okay? So black and white, basic, no diagrams, no formatting. What also happens if I'm gonna represent you to a client of mine, I have to rebrand your resume with Randstad, Sarah, contact me. Um, if it's too hard to format, I've got an administrator and I love her and it makes her life really difficult, okay? And then, you know what? When it's such a highly competitive market already, if you're gonna put us through that, sometimes it's too hard, okay? Black and white. Did you have a question? And Word documents, not PDFs. Yeah. So for those of you who use PDF, stop. It makes our world a nightmare. Uh 
of PDF because it's really compatible with any kind of PCs. Because so, sometimes if you open with Word file, then they come up only on different computers. Easier with Word by a long way because PDF you actually have to have the PDF to Word. Because what as a, what we do is, as, as Sarah said, we will take your CV. We never manipulate your CV. We never rewrite it. We don't lie. Okay? We will take what you've written, but we obviously brand it on a RAN stand. Um, logo and format. For us to have to go through versions, it's harder. Well, it's and two. Send a PDF and a word. <laughs> Cover all bases. Yeah. Easy to read. I'm blind, size twelve. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whatever's easy to read. I actually have it here, clear font. Um, okay. Uh, next one, I've already mentioned the formatting. Okay, bullet points, really, really good. Chances are we're reading your resume when we're in a taxi, when we're on the train, when I'm on the bus to work, because I get 100 resumes a day. Um, so if it's on my phone, um, I can't read sentences because my phone's not big enough. So dot points, really easy to understand, really clear, is the best thing to do. So how many of you apply using your phones? Okay. So it's getting more worse and worse. So people will apply with their phones because, as I said, we live in the digital age. And as Sarah said, I'll get on the ferry at night and I'll open up a CV. And your screens are only that big because you're not doing it on your computer at your desk. And it becomes a challenge. So all the things you actually do need to think about. Um, spelling and grammar is unbelievable, all right? The amount of time that I had attention to detail and like detailed or something. It's ridiculous. Um, you guys are your accountants, okay? Your whole job is attention to detail. Get the spelling and grammar right, okay? Look, I appreciate English can be a second language. Get someone else to read it for you before you send it, okay? And that's on the cover letter and the resumes. Um, on that, no shorthand, okay? Because if we're doing a word search on a resume, we need to know what, what the full word is not just a shorthand. I read a resume this morning that said you, and they just wrote you. <laughs> so automatically no. Um, just on the, on the resume as well, when you are applying, we're talking about applying and trying to get your best foot forward. When a client, and to a large degree, we also have these tools, there's a lot of technology, okay? So if you're applying for a role which is commercial analyst, okay? The key word there being Analyst. The more times you write the word analysis or analyst in your CV, the higher up in the search ranking you will come. Okay? So again, I go back to if you don't tailor your CV to the role you're doing and you've got the word analysis or analyst written once, you're down at the bottom. And by the time they've gone through the 50, 100 CVs, They've probably got their shortlist, but don't worry about the ones at the bottom. Okay? So put your best foot forward. Clear fonts, so we've already addressed. Um, achievements. Okay, so this is a big one. Your resume is going to be read by three different parties. Okay, you've got HR. Okay, let's be honest, they're not accountants. Okay, they're matching a job description to a resume, which is why it's important to have all those buzzwords. Okay. Recruiters, you're very lucky if you get a recruiter that's an ex-accountant. Brad's one. Um, I'm economics and law. Pretty close. Um, <laughs> we'll play it. Um, so you're very, very lucky. What recruiters like is context. Okay, And again, they, they just need context. They need size of business. They need current situation. They need visa status. They need all those little things for their client. Third party is your line manager who is also an accountant, right? And they're an analyst. Now they're like you. They love your numbers, your data, your figures, all right? They love tangible stuff. In your achievement section, you need to make sure it's value add stuff. It's not just another responsibility that you did really well. 
It's actually something you have delivered, something that's gone above and beyond, something that added value to your client or your company that you're working for. Okay? Who's heard of the STAR format? I'm just on the achievements. Make certain you owned it. Not I was part of the team. You owned it. You drove it. You delivered it. Because a client should, and so should the recruiter, ask you what you did and what the outcome was. And if you then turn around and go, well, I was actually just part of the team. Well, we did this. I don't care what we did. I don't want to know what you did. I'm not hiring we. I'm hiring you. Okay? Who's heard of the star format? I always am talking about star format during my training session. Guys, get on that. Love it. Need to pay attention more. <laughs> Um, the STAR format is what we talk about when we're trying to give an example, okay? S is the situation, all right? Mr. Klein, I was employed here as this financial analyst and it was my job to work at Team of Six and this is what my purpose and my role was. The task is I was brought onto this project and it was my job to deliver this, okay? A is the actions, okay? First, I did this. Then I did this. Then I did this. Okay? Doesn't matter how basic this stuff sounds, it's what you did and you've got to walk us through it. Particularly for non finance people. Okay? I'm talking HR, I'm talking recruiters. Okay? Walk them through it. R is for result. What was the end result of that? This is what you put on your resume numbers, data, figures. What value add did you bring? You set it out in your achievement section. Any questions? Go to Hunter. <laughs> um, right, Paul, any questions? Okay. Um, next is dates on your resume. Okay, we get a lot of resumes where we've just got years. I worked from this company from 2015 to 2018. Well, that's really cool, but I don't know if that was three years or if that was actually two and a half years. I'm, I'm not really sure. You've got to put your dates on there, your month. Not like I started on the 6th of May at 10 a.m. Like I'm talking just dates and a year, okay? With, with, if you've had a career, okay, and you've got to remember you're applying for roles. If you started an accounts payable and you're now a management accountant, don't put all the details in the accounts payable part, just accounts payable, and then you start because the experience that you've grown towards and you have is what is going to have the impact. The more concise to the point, the better your opportunity. Okay? If you've got a CV which is 15 pages long, you know, your audience is going to shut down. You're only doing it to yourself, no one else. You know? Make certain that the experience that you're applying for appears absolutely in the line of the last two roles if not the current one. Yeah, and I was going to say that as well. It's all about the relevance. So if you're applying for a commercial analyst role or a finance analyst role, but you've got all the detail under AP, it doesn't really tell us anything. Okay? So let's bring back the relevance and, again, putting your best foot forward. Um, look, for those who are very experienced, who've got a number of years behind them, appreciate it. You've done really well. But... Let's just keep it to the last 10 years, okay? Again, relevance. A lot has changed in 10 to 15 years. Um, let's just keep it really relevant. If you're desperate to tell everyone what you did back in, you know, 1992, um, let's just put a table, all right? Or just a dot point. Just tell us what your job was and where your company was. It's not really that relevant, okay? Any questions on that? Any question, guys? Yeah. You say it's hard to take it to Yeah. But if this just the last uh, company in the middle of this 10 or 12, so you will you list that company? Because you say 60 years ago, I worked from that company. Then you say just cut. put the date on it. Just put the date. We don't need that, same. Oh, okay. Just put the date on it. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. 
And look, we edit all of this anyway, depending on what job we apply to. Okay? Um, look, the application process. This is what Brett's talked about. Um, at no point do you have one resume. You might build up three, four, or five, depending what companies you're at or, or what jobs you're wanting to apply to. What's really important is that you've got a cover letter because a lot of businesses ask for them. We read a cover letter when your education isn't in Australia, okay? And we read a cover letter because we want to know your motivations. We want to know your communication style, okay? We want to know um, what your current situation is, okay? We just need more information. Um, a lot of this is around a trial, okay? It's like an email. We just need to know the grammar, the spelling, the communication for commercial analyst roles, okay? And we read them. I'll be fair, we do. Um, but it's important to tailor it to a job. I've been called, dear sir, and automatically you haven't read the advert because my name is Sarah, okay? So dear sir isn't going to cut it for me. I'm quite insulted, okay? So get a name where possible. Dear HR manager, um, dear recruiter at Goodman Fielder, whatever, tailor it as much as you can, okay? and explain to them what the situation is, why you're interested in the role, I'm currently working permanently, I'm on four weeks notice, that sort of stuff, okay? Again, that covered just the relevance of the job we're applying to, okay? Does it make sense to apply, all right? Do you have the requirements that they're asking for? Again, putting your best foot forward. And if you do have those requirements, are they on your resume? Are they clear in black and white, page one standing out? Make sure it's relevant. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Understanding the key criteria and matching that criteria on the resume. But don't copy and paste. Okay. I've had some people who have copied and pasted. It sounds really good because I wrote it, but I also recognised it. Okay. Also, let's just make sure you haven't been doing the same thing in your last three roles, okay? If you've worked at three different companies and your responsibilities are exactly the same in each of your last three positions, I know you've copied and pasted, I know you haven't moved anywhere in two years, right? Might have moved companies, but your job's the same. It doesn't make sense. No company is exactly the same and no job is exactly the same. Tailor it. This is a big one. This is my pet peeve. If I'm going to call you and you answer the phone, hello? Okay, cool. Hi, it's Sarah. Who am I speaking with? Or am I speaking with so-and-so? Okay, if you've applied for a job, you answer the phone professionally. Doesn't matter who it is. Okay? Doesn't matter if it's a private number, if it's a landline, if it's a mobile that's not in your phone, you answer it professionally. Okay? I have a lot of candidates that answer the phone, hello, tell me. <laughs> tell you what? I called you, okay? It's not fair, okay? And it, and it doesn't sound good. And if you're looking for a commercial role, it's all about communication. It's all about presentation, okay? I got into such the habit that if my mum calls on my home phone, which I don't have in my phone, I will answer it. Hello, Sarah Davies speaking. That's my mum, all right? Get into the habit, okay? Because if you answer it professionally, we'll have a decent conversation. You've got to remember that we, this is our job. So our job every day is talking to people. Your role is actually accounting. So if we call you based on an application and you can't talk, rather just say I can't talk, and I call you back, can you send me an email? Can you send me a text message with your number? And I'll call you back. We know it's difficult for you guys to talk in an office environment. We're well aware of it, okay? I always have a good laugh with candidates. So, phone rings, I'm on the other line, and I can hear the candidates go, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing that everybody in the office is thinking? <laughs> <laughs> they're talking to a recruiter because they're not speaking, hold on. <laughs> Talk. Hi, how are you doing? No one will think nothing that's a friend. Just a little tip. <laughs> a 
and this is another one. If you're applying for roles, you need to keep a record of what role you've applied to, who you're waiting for a phone call from, okay, and why you want the job, okay? Yes, I recruit contract roles a lot, and if I called a candidate and I said, hey, you've applied for my financial analyst role, it's a six month contract in the city, like, let's talk about it. And they say, oh, great. What was that again? Which company? What role? Okay, and I'm like, oh, why did you apply? Oh, look, I'm just desperate for a job. <laughs> well, no, you're not good enough, right? Then I'll cut the phone call, okay? That's one reason, all right? You need to know what you've applied to. Secondly, there are so many recruitment agencies out there, very few good ones, okay? Rand says the best. Um, <laughs> but if you're going to apply for roles, there are some companies that partner with multiple agencies. Okay, so if I'm going to brief you on a job at, at Coca-Cola, okay, but then another agency calls you about Coke, and you say, yeah, 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 all good, and we both send your resume to Coke, they say, hell no, you've missed the job, and you make me look like an idiot, and I will never speak to you again. <laughs> Sounds rude, but it's true. I've got 1,500 other people I can talk to, okay? So just be mindful, but if you keep a spreadsheet, you all love spreadsheets, keep a spreadsheet. Write down role I've applied to, when I applied, who spoke to me about it, and what's the status? Am I interviewing? Am I not interviewing? When did I last call someone? I've got fantastic candidates who make me accountable. Sarah, we spoke two days ago. What's going on? Oh, yeah, okay, let me do this. Okay, because we speak to so many people all day. I like to think I'm very, very good. Brad thinks I'm very, very good, okay? But I'm also only human. Okay, so you've got to follow up with people and be assertive. And this comes back to that communication piece, okay? And if you're as detail-orientated as you can be and make yourself accountable, I'm going to find a job, okay? And it's going to come from one of these sources. Does that make sense? Any questions? I got one question, sir. Yes. Um, there are a lot of candidates who got a problem of picking up a phone call while during, you know, the work time. Yeah. Uh, like the embarrassing, like, uh, well, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you got the other side. Look at the pocket, you know, scratching inside. Now, uh, some kind of they got a strategy like to leave a world's mo wo message. And uh, I want to know of the timing, you know, if they put your uh, phone on the, you know, they didn't pick up on you, you leave a message, and uh, how long are they going to get back to you? Uh, what do you think? Lunchtime would be great. Lunchtime after work, as soon as you can. Duck out and get a coffee, call me. Absolutely. Okay, 10 second messages drive me crazy because I talk a lot. I hate those voicemails. You have 10 seconds which will we convert it into text. <laughs> that doesn't work for me because I talk. Um, so if you can, don't do that. Have like a dial up, but otherwise I'd send you a text message. If I'm that desperate to get a hold of you, I will send you a text. Okay? But, you know, at lunchtime, if you're ducking out for a coffee or cigarette or um, after work, we work decent hours, right? I'm still online at 6.30. Okay, you can call me. I'll be there. That's a good question. Okay, brilliant. Any other question? Why do people always you? Because <laughs> I do have these questions. Um, so a quick one on the uh, full interview about FB2. Uh, what's the key factors that makes a successful phone call? And what's the ideal talking time you, that you think that will make um, the perfect candidate? And what you value most in the community? Over the phone. Because I do have those uh, issues now. I think the, it's a difficult question to answer, and I'll tell you why for a number of different reasons. Now, the most important thing is when you're on the phone, to have an impact naturally, it's better face to face. You know, if I was doing this by telephone and just the voices were coming through, it wouldn't really have the impact. Okay? So you've got to be thinking, how am I going to make an impact over the telephone? If someone is, I want to use the word excitable, but if someone is energetic, if someone is listening, you know, we live and breathe by the saying, two ears, one mouth, not the other way around. Okay? It has an impact. If we ask you a question and you don't answer the question, and then you waffle off in a completely different direction, you've lost us. 
You know, if the telephone, as we've talked about, it's difficult at work, it needs to be short and sharp, do it. We don't mind. You know, for us, when we're calling, and we're calling to nine times out of ten, either stay in touch or brief you on the job, the quicker you go, yes, the quicker we can then get your details to a client. So, you know, hopefully the interaction is, is a good one. It's positive. But it, to me, they, they shouldn't be long conversations. They should be fairly short and sharp to the point, right, I'm calling, I've got this role, organization, salary, location, and the position. You know, you should then, in a number, you know, if it's perm, Hopefully we're sending a job spec. I mean, I, I, again, sometimes you don't get job specs. You know, and, and we will say to you guys as candidates, we haven't got a job spec. I got briefed today on one of the um, biggest corporates in Australia. Client never recruits with a job spec. The you saying, well, I want a job spec. Well, I'm not going to get one. So you either want to be in or you don't. You know, there has to be also a leap of faith. So the quicker you can get that trust with your recruiter, the quicker that they can service you correctly. I work with a system company, a company, but I have been exposed to the analytical side of things. Um, do you actually, but the job title is still a system accountant, will you actually spend time to look at my JDs, or you say, hey, hey, okay, I'm going to skip this CV? Okay, so let me, let me switch this for you, okay? If you sent me the CV, let's say you were the recruiter, what would you do? that you'd look at job titles. Now, imagine I called you as the recruiter. I was the candidate, you were the recruiter. Hi, it's Brad, just calling, I saw you advertise for the commercial role. I'm currently working here. At the moment, I'm actually doing a lot of analysis, although my title is assistant, but I have a lot of it. I'm about to send you my CV. What's gonna have the best impact? Don't, just bear in mind, you guys are going to put your best foot forward. How are you going to do that? A lot of the time it comes down to communication and how you present yourself. You know, titles, to me, I know a lot of people like fancy, glorious titles. Ooh. Told she you told you she was a good technology. <laughs> you had that communicated well. <laughs> Anyone else? Any other questions? Yeah. There you go. I noticed that some companies they have their own recruitment process. So my question is, what's the difference between the like the recruitment agent and also the companies who have their like own? A recruitment process because sometimes I want to apply like maybe like two years ago I applied a role and then I got rejected and now I feel like I'm more competent to do that at that job so will my like because they have my record will it still be counted if I want to reapply like you know because I feel like it's quite different the process they are very different processes there's no harm in applying Go for it. Chances are that person doesn't like it anymore, so we'll have some of that one. Um, a, a, a big difference between internal and agency, and I've got to be very careful. Um, we know the market really well. We live and breathe the market every day in finance and accounting. Um, internal could recruit IT, sales marketing, um, reception roles. Um, 
maybe a little bit of finance, yeah. Um, warehouse and logistics, they kind of do everything. We live and breathe and talk about finance and accounting all day, every day. So I think that's the difference. Um, like I said, HR, internal recruitment and line managers, they just look for different things. Um, there's no harm in applying for that. Why not? They, they might have their own internal tracking system. Um, most internal recruitment teams don't. Okay, they're in the moment. They need to recruit this role. They need to recruit now. You know, they've got a job out. They'll screen everybody. They'll interview everybody. Good, move on. Next. And then they've got this job. Okay, there's not necessarily a database full of people that they revisit all the time. Is that fair? Absolutely. I mean, there are some corporates out there that will have databases. So when you apply, the CV goes onto the database. But if it's two years later, when they get a job, you've got to remember the internal recruitment functions, again, I've got to be careful, as Sarah said, they, they're not doing accounting all the time. Okay, so the more up to date the CVs are, they're not data mining, they're not out there. You know what, I, we hear feedback from all of our clients, as well as candidates, oh, you know, I got sent a LinkedIn request by the internal recruiter at Coca-Cola, using Coca-Cola as an example, no slight of Coca-Cola by any stretch of the imagination. But they get sent a LinkedIn response. It can be from any corporate, and then there's nothing that follows. The candidates sit there going, well, why did they send me anything? Why, they, why did they want to connect with me? But a lot of them are, they're doing that to try and build up their own internal databases and their own internal pools, and hopefully at some point in time, they deflect to it. So, you know, I would apply, I'd keep applying. But instead, I'd pick up the phone and call before I applied. Yeah, have your impact, send the CV, because then you, you're not asking for a generic email address, you should actually be asking for the direct email address. Who do I send it to? If they say to you, just apply, you know you're going into the world of ether. Okay? They just, again, you've got to ask your questions in terms of the values of that organisation. You know, how do they run it? Um, you know, I've got great clients who move really quickly, and I've got clients that move really slowly. And the candidate experience on the slow side, candidates are never really that overly enthused by it. You know, they want quicker decisions. So, uh, pick up the phone, make the call. I doubt that even if, would even know your CV was there. One of the agents, she asked me, what do you want to do? Your CV is telling too much. I'm not sure how to handle this answers. Depends on what the role you were applying for. I was just contacting the agent, you know, to look up a bit experience, I've got in-depth knowledge of AR, AP, MIS. I've been working from the last 12 years in a company where I used to set up the processes and, you know, set up the process for the company and, you know, have an in-depth knowledge. So she said, you know, because I got your CV from reference, that's why I'm looking for over it. Otherwise, I have gone over it, oh, she's too much. So what you will exactly want to do, so I must have, you know, a one of the same. So I'm not sure how to represent yourself when you have a number of things in you. Look, I think the key thing there is if you're applying for a role, as you say, you've got AP and AR. If you're applying for AP, make certain that the AP stuff sings. Put the AR at the bottom. How come a person can be working only in AR for last day? years on the same job. There are people like that. There are, there are, there there are people, people like that. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, 
Clients love that. You've got to, you've got to remember, as an accountant, at any type of hiring manager actually doesn't enjoy recruitment. Why? Because it takes them away from doing their job. Okay? So it's painful for them. So if they've got somebody who's prepared to do the same job and there's no fuss and does the job well and is never leaving, you know, bearing in mind, dependent on the type of role that they're looking at. You know, a commercial analyst um, is going to change roles. Very rare they'll stay. Accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll, people can stay there forever. They do. Okay? It depends on the role, depends on the organisation, depends on the culture of the organisation. It, it is a tough one. If you want to progress, the, the challenge for you is to get into a role and then start to cross-pollinate in terms of the different divisions. You know, if you, you've done AP, you've done AR, and you want to move into an assistant accountant, hypothetical, and you want to start doing more journals and recs and potential prep of accounts, You've got to stay in an organisation because the one that's hiring is not going to hire you based on AP and AR. So that's where you've got to get the longevity within an organisation and the ability to, to get some trajectory. I hope that answers that. But if you're looking for AP or AR, come and see us afterwards. We've got plenty of jobs for you. So you've got your BA, which is generally a very technical IT person, and you'll see a lot of that advertised in the marketplace, and that's more systems technical. And then you get the BA, which sits on the business side. Okay? And that BA on the business side tends to be more business process and more analysis, but in terms of the business process. The analysis that we're talking about here, and I'm sure the, the courses that Hunter runs, is about looking at the business in terms of, not from a process or from a structural perspective or from a market, is looking at how the business is performing. So let's look at the revenue, let's look at the costs, let's look at the marketplace in terms of shares against our competitors. If you want to progress that way, case studies are not going to help you. You're going to need to get more experience in doing financial analysis but you've just shook your head and that's not the way you want to go. So where do you want to go? Can I, uh, can I give you an example instead? Absolutely. Yeah, once I had an interview... As long as it's in the star format. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, the example is the interview that I had with Woolworths. The position was a senior business analyst. Um, Apparently, I, I failed with that one. But one of the questions they gave me is that um, if Coase is running a campaign, how can you analyze whether this, have, uh, whether this will have an impact on us and how much uh, impact it will have on us? So uh, just 
um, some um, open questions, open case questions. So that is um, that is the kind of position I would like to, to apply for. How did you answer that question? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, recall that terrible memory <laughs> because apparently I failed that one. Yeah. Look, if you're not going to be talking about that in the context of financial analysis, now that financial analysis, naturally for me, it screams pricing. Okay, so I would have deflected straight to pricing and profitability. Okay, and that would have been right. How many stores? How long was the um, uh, the campaign on for? Where was it positioned? Positioning within the Woolworths or within any retail store is absolutely paramount. You know, if it's in the back corner on a shelf or if it's at the till, if it's closer, you get the impulse buyer to the till. So all of those factors would be how I would have answered the question from an analysis perspective. What I'm thinking you want to go down is probably more business process because you're not talking technical IT in terms of systems, but you're also not talking financial analysis and business performance. But they also gave me a spreadsheet and required me to do so. <laughs> and and then it's all work. Yeah. Yes, that's what you can get in every analyst. Okay. So, so my question is that in order to get a position like that, yeah. um, what essential skills do you think I need to uh, learn? Well, if it's going to be a financial question, You've got, to, you've got to hone your financial skills, okay? And that would come down to commercial, pricing, place in the store, number of stores, competitive market, um, competitive products, etc., etc. insights, data analytics, data mining, yada, yada. If that question is far more operational based, then you're probably looking at the analysis like position in the store cost of getting the goods to the store. Okay, so you start to look at economic factors. Okay? What was the weather like? It's all of this stuff, particularly with retail environments, is all the stuff that they look at. You know? And again, you've got to find what you want to do. You know, is it is it the financial? No. Is it the business or the operational? Absolutely. Then you've got to look into how do you get that skill set. I can give you a good website, 3 www.ifaustralia.com. <laughs> We've got all knowledge and the skill there you can learn. I gave you the plug. Thank you. Thank you for your referral. All right, any other question? Um, um, it looks like the uh, salary range for commercial analysts is quite big. It's somehow time from like 75k all the way to like 125 plus. Then I'm just curious, um, what's the major difference, let's say, between 120k or 125ish to like 90k market? What's the major difference in these two roles? Thank you. Likely to be stakeholder engagement and the level of engagement you have within a business. So that more 7590 is probably the junior person. Then they're probably reporting through to a senior BA. I got an analyst today at 180 grand. Okay? So you can't you actually can't look at I mean if you look at from a corporate finance perspective, those analysts that are doing the equity, an equity analyst is on a million dollars. So you can't really look at salaries. Okay? You've got to look at what is the level of stakeholder engagement. Naturally, the equities person is punching about, you know, in the big end of town, whereas a, a 75k analyst is probably just doing some of the analysis. They're probably not presenting that to the line managers, to the business partners. They're probably just the person who's in it. So as you go higher, the roles tend to move from being a doer to more of a reviewer. And a presenter. Yeah. The communication, again. Uh, my question is about the, uh, the life of the commercial analyst. So for uh, accounting different type of roles for AP, AR, 
hero, they probably have a, a longer lifetime for this or uh, for commercial analysis. Or also expectation from the company uh, uh, probably this person can stay for two years and then uh, this is time to move on, whether they have this uh, sort of uh, life for this kind of role. The opposite. <laughs> Just that opposite, um, you could be in AR, like we said, 10 years AR, that's all you do, day in, day out. We love you, stand out, do your job, all right? Um, commercial analysts, you're employed as long as you add value, all right? The definition of an analyst is to add value, okay? Well, yeah, if you're not adding value, then why do they need you, okay? You know, most people, the when you look at how things have changed, okay, over the last few years, it's been people leave their jobs purely based on money. Okay, for the last number of years, that's all it's been about. Okay, and the generation, in terms of the younger generation, it's, it was important. Now, the big ticket item is career progression and work life balance. Okay, now I can give you some examples where I've sat in front of clients and um, a client will say, I want somebody who only wants to be there for two years. Okay? But then they may have somebody, and, and the reason they're saying that a lot of the time is because they enjoy somebody coming in with a new set of eyes, challenging status quo. But a lot of the times that person is not going to have career progression. Because that hiring manager is going to stay there, so they naturally have to move. Okay? So again, if you go back to the boss fit, that diagram about what the boss actually, you need to understand who you're interviewing with. Because that will dictate a lot. If that person's been doing the same job for 10 years, do you really think you've got a chance of progressing? If they've been there for two years, and they're saying to you in the interview, guess what, I want for two years because I want my next job, you know automatically exactly what you're getting yourself in for. Skills and better have a chance to progress next level. You're the judge of that. No one puts a gun to your head and says, take the job. You, you make the decision. We provide the opportunity. You make the decision. You're the one who's deciding how long you're in there and how. So, you know, you've got to educate yourself in terms of exactly what you're getting yourself in for. If you know it's two years, then you know it's two years. And I've got a lot of clients who will hire for two years. They don't mind that. Okay? I've got a perfect example now. I can give you an example where I've just taken a very, very senior gentleman. He got a massive pay cut. Not a pay rise, a massive pay cut. Why? Because it's the job he wants to do. But the client is well aware that he knows if he cannot deliver the next role in two years, he's out of it. The client is well aware of it. So, you know, you're the one who actually decides how long where you go, your trajectory. If you're just doing the same day in, day out, there's no challenging, there's no growth. You know, you can't expect to apply for a much more senior role and expect to get that more senior role. Um, so, um, it's not what um, very experienced. Uh, if I, um, as a, a very recent financial graduate, so um, what are the most important things or what are the most important competencies for me to be successful in the job application or what, what um, role is appropriate for me to apply for? So finance, yeah. 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 And finance and accounting. Finance and accounting. Bachelor and master. From where? Which university? Uh, 
EMS W. Okay. And were you schooled in Australia? Did you do your schooling in terms of high school, HSE? Okay. So, with the international study and then the local education, what's going to make you stand out from the crowd as a graduate? And that's more than likely going to come down to some kind of work experience. So, whether you did an intern. Okay. I would the things I would highlight are gonna be your marks. Hopefully you got really good grades. So hopefully you got distinctions, high distinctions, and that's gonna make you stand out from the crowd. You know, what are the types of roles that you're gonna go into? You're probably going into because of your degree, because of the masters, you're starting at in reality the assistant accounting level. You know, all graduate styles. So whether you apply to you know, your, your big grad intakes, so whether it be the big corporates, whether it be the, the, the audit office, Selena was here earlier, they take a lot, the ATO takes a hell of a lot of grants, and you've got to find the grant programs, or you're looking at the assistant account level. Thank you, Dara. Um, I just got a very um, specific and number question for you guys. So I, I think if this was a very good question uh, that lady just brought up, like being stuck in one company, like, um, you know, uh, due to a lot of factors. So my question is, um, I observed from my friends and my connections. So most, uh, in most cases, you get promoted internally. So it's really real to see, like, actually you got an external opportunity to get a promotion. Like, for example, if you are, um, commercial analyst and you got commercial controller position outside the company but I also understand like um, you know it's a game like if you want to be a chef in the port or you want to be a fish in kind of game but I'm just wondering what kind of ratio like in your past experience you've seen like uh, the uh, your clients actually would like to give the opportunity for someone like for this kind of external promotion opportunities Every day. Oh, really? Every okay. single day. Right. Oh, okay. That's really refreshing. It, it, honestly, and this is where, when we talk about having a relationship with your recruiter, instead of just being transactional. So transactional, what do I mean? Job, flick a CV via email, no relationship. Pick up the phone, speak, develop a rapport, develop a, a relationship. You've got somebody, we're the ones talking to the clients. We've got line of sight with the clients every day. Let us do that. If we see and we have that relationship and we can see the skill set there, that we'll pick up the phone and call. For that client, that example that I told you, I had two examples of two candidates. Neither of them had the skill set. But they were the perfect candidate, cultural fit and long term. And when I sent the CV to the client, I said, I called the client before and I said, I'm going to send you something, you're going to say no. Our relationship, listen to me, meet them. And he did any hard both. That's really brilliant. Thanks. Okay. So the relationship is very, very important that you have with your recruiters. So prior to the conversation we had, apparently you love AP and AR for the long quality of the company. Yep. Um, so I have the question, I think that's a rumor kind of things. Apparently when they're talking about you want to find your way career path, you apparently will be seeking the opportunity outside that will cause you jumping companies all the time. And uh, as Sarah said, she had a lot of contract jobs on, the, on hand as well. But like when you have lots of contract experience, will that affect you once you decide, oh, that's the area where I really want to get into? Will that be convinced your clients say, you know, that guy is really good, they will be stay with you for uh, the rest of the 10 years after they're jumping like four times in the two years previous? Look, most clients, um, again, for me, how I would play that, I wouldn't do, I would say, meet the person and let's do a tent to burn. So, you know, you go in and prove that's what you want to do. 
and you prove, you deliver, you get the opportunity to go perm. That, you know, the contracting does, and look, unfortunately, the contracting market, people get caught in the contracting market, and they can't get out of that. And we get it, we see it every single day. It's tough. We absolutely understand that. Okay? For us, it's then trying to, when you go into the next contract, you're actually communicating, look, I do want to I know what I want to do, these are the roles I want to do, I've got the experience, let me show you, deliver and go perm. comes down to how you are in person. How you communicate. How you communicate, how you actually can show that you can move from smaller to large. Now, if you've got the skill set and you've got the recruiter on your side because you've done things the right way, they will go into that for you. You know, the reality is then it's up to you. We can only get you in front. We can prepare you, we can assist you, Hunter, again, I'll give you a plug. You can have the technical, you can understand, do the courses, you know the type of work and the questions. We will know the questions that the client will ask. We will assist you with that. And we can help and guide and train and develop you in terms of interview because no one's taught how to interview. Okay? So again, I'm going back to get a good rapport with your recruiter and then they will go and help you and assist you. But you can absolutely make the move. I think you, we've all got to remember, um, Brad and I and recruiters, we're not there to get you jobs, okay? Um, we are not an employment agent, okay? We're a recruitment company and we can provide opportunities. We can open doors. We can give advice. We consult the consultants, okay? But you've also got to do the work. Okay, you're going to come with the technical, you're going to come with a really good attitude, you're going to come with the research, you're going to show up, and I was going to go through it, we might run out of time, but um, you've got to come prepared, and you've got to be on your game, okay? Because if I'm going in to sell the dream to the client to say that you're a rock star, you better be a rock star. When you go to an interview, you better be, okay? Because that comes back to me, all right? And like I said, the 1,500 people I can go with, if I bank on you and I think you're a gun, you better be gone. <laughs> Lots of recruitment jargon in that. Uh, sorry, but but like, you understand what I mean? It, it, it's a two-way street. I, I'm not here to find new jobs. I can't promise that. We're here to open doors, provide opportunities. Okay, you're gonna want to walk through that door, and you're gonna want to take the job if it's right for you. Last question, because I think the time is you know running out. Last question. I'm not good at negotiating the salary, so I just wonder what's the correct answer. If the recruiter asks, what's your salary expectation? Again, yeah, I've been doing it a long time. But invariably, I'm going to know exactly what you're on. I will ask you what you're on. However, the client is going to pay what market rate is, or what they deem you to be worth. Okay, so, you know, we get a lot of, um, and I've just had one recently, last week, you know, where you're making a career decision. And if you're making your career decision based on money, you're always going to make your career decision based on money, and you're going to move. Because you're going to think that you can get more and more and more, so you're just going to keep moving, which will never help your career. So you've got to look at it from a long-term perspective. You know, that extra five grand that I might be worth, if it's the dream job for you and it's a great job for you right here, right now, to get you where you want to go, what's the five grand you're going to mean? So for me, I always ask the candidate what they're on. When I talk to clients and candidates about what the role will pay, 
it doesn't mean that that client will pay you that number. At the end of the day, they will, they will ask us, what does the candidate want? We will generally tell them, if you interview well, they'll pay it. If you don't interview well, they're generally going to go, well, maybe not. So, you know, I, I, I'm always about being very, very transparent. You know, if you're worth 100 grand, I'm going to put you forward at 100 grand. The client will know that's what you want. But if you're on 50 grand and you tell me that you want 150 grand, I'm probably going to tell you to call Hayes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Are we Thanks. still going? Uh, you can Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Hopefully, you found some of this stuff useful. Very useful. I've been learning a lot tonight. So, my advice pick up the phone, talk to us. We're just like you, and we're exactly the same. We're all humans. So, connect with us on LinkedIn. Good luck, guys. Thank you very much. Well done, guys. I think tonight uh, we record around, you know, on the YouTube live over two hours. I'm, this is a really definitely a gift for all the people tonight and also people online. And uh, some question we go answer tonight. I think everybody get a lot of uh, tips, you know, move another way step toward your dream job. Thank you, guys. Again. Thank you for having us. And uh, if you know if you don't think you qualify your skill or knowledge is shortage, uh, please jump on the line. ifaustralia.com.au. You know we can help 50% of your issue. Okay, guys, thank you. So everybody want to pick up uh, some name card? This is card. I leave here.